Hey everybody, welcome to Ascension Presents. My name is Jackie Francois Angel, and today I'm gonna to talk about five reasons to ditch the pill. Now, some of you are like, the pill works for me, why would I need to ditch it? Well, here's the deal. I believe, number one, that every woman deserves to be informed and educated about what we put in our body, and number two, that if there are safer, healthier options out there for us, that we deserve to know about them, and that we deserve to have that. But the pill is basically treated like a sisterhood of the traveling pants, one size fits all medication. I mean, don't we think that's a problem? It's like, the doctors prescribe it like Oprah handing out cars. It's like, you got acne, you get the pill. PMS, the pill. Heavy cramps, depression, endometriosis, PCOS, ovarian cysts, you get the pill, you get the pill. It's like, don't you, aren't there other things that, are, that can actually help me? Aren't there other options other than the pill? I mean, some of you are probably already skeptical, like, that is interesting. Why, why aren't we given other things to help our bodies? Well, more and more medical doctors feel the same way. Um, I'm, I'm seeing more medical doctors kind of realize that in their education, and I've talked to all kinds of doctors, OBGYNs, internal medicine doctors, family doctors, that they basically told me in med school, all they are taught is to prescribe the pill. They're not taught how to heal your endometriosis, your PCOS, your, your depression, your um, PMS, your heavy cramps. They're taught to prescribe you the pill. And I'm so glad more and more doctors are realizing this is a problem. I actually interviewed one doctor, her name's Dr. Teresa Stegan. She is a, a NAPRO OBGYN surgeon. And she said in, in med school, she realized that was a problem that basically the pill was just used as a band-aid. Like it wasn't actually fixing these things but that there's got to be a way to actually help women at the source, figure out what the source is. So I asked her, I said, do you prescribe the pill for any reason? She said, no, not for any reason, because there, for every single reason people are put on the pill, there is a healthier, safer, better alternative that I could help them with. And she actually is also a surgeon, so she has helped so many of my friends who have had endometriosis, PCOS, ovarian cysts. She's helped so many of them by charting, by giving them bioidentical hormones that aren't as dangerous as the synthetic estrogen and progesterone hormones found in the pill and so many other hormonal contraceptives. Um, so they're so much healthier and they actually are fixing and healing a woman at the source of the problem. So I hope you're interested now on learning more about the side effects of the pill and that there are better alternatives. So number one, the reason why you should ditch the pill is that it is a group one carcinogen. Um, back in 2005, the United Nations um, International Agency on the Research of Cancer reported that estrogen, progestin, oral contraceptives, combination drugs like the pill, like Depo-Provera, the IUD Mirena, and the NuvaRing, the patch, and anything else that has combined synthetic estrogen and progesterone are considered a group one carcinogen. A group one carcinogen, which promote, which a carcinogen is a substance or agent that promotes cancer, especially for breast cancer, cervical cancer, and liver cancer. You know what other group one carcinogens are if you look on the list? Let me tell you. Um, arsenic, asbestos, formaldehyde, mustard gas, tobacco smoking, secondhand smoking, the list goes on and on. So next time your doctor prescribes a pill, say, can you also give me an ET style hazmat suit to go with it? I mean, you guys, if we're trying to eat clean, you know, hormone free, organic, then absolutely you should ditch the pill or any type of hormonal contraception that is a group one carcinogen. I mean, it's a no brainer, ditch the pill. Number two reason you should ditch the pill is are the physical side effects. Now, some women notice immediately the different physical side effects. I Googled the pill is making me and people, the first things that came up were, the pill is making me fat, depressed, crazy, sick, bleed, sad, dry, gain weight, break out, feel like crap. Well, um, I, I mean, some women are like, well, I don't feel any of these side effects. Well, here, those are immediate side effects. And there are some side effects that are much worse the longer you are on the pill. And maybe they're not immediate, but I think it's even more daunting. I think it's worth saying about depression that in JAMA Psychiatry, a scientific journal, it said that women who were on combined oral contraceptives um, were 23% more likely to become depressed. And the rates were even higher for teens on the pill. The combined contraceptive made teenagers 80% more likely to suffer from depression. What? This next side effect is one of the most researched, most well-known side effects of the pill, and that's blood clots. I, this is so crazy. The National Blood Clot Alliance on their website says, although the, the pills do not cause blood clots, most birth control pills increase, do increase a woman's chance of developing a blood clot by three to four times. What? Oh, they don't cause them, but you're just three to four times more likely to get them. You guys, the nurse's health study at Harvard Med School found that the pill users 
are 250%, 250% more likely to have heart attacks and strokes than those who don't, don't use the pill. So if you have blood clots in your legs, you know, that's bad, but then if they travel to your heart, you have a heart attack. If they travel to your brain, you have a stroke. If, you, if they travel to your lung, you have a pulmonary embolism. You guys, you can just Google the amount of young women who were on the pill for three months, six months, nine months, who died of strokes, heart attacks, because they were on the pill. They weren't given, it was like they were on the pill for their acne and they died. I mean, come on, you guys, we deserve better than this. Researchers at the Mayo Clinic, they studied 23 large, well-conducted studies and found that 21 of them um, there was an average of 44% increased risk of breast cancer in women who were taking the pill prior to the first pregnancy. And it says women who use another study, women who use the pill for five to nine years have twice the risk of cervical cancer and three times the risk if they're using it for over 10 years. And although the risk of uterine cancer and ovarian cancer go down on the pill, there are six times more breast cancer in women than uterine and ovarian cancer combined. Now, some of you may have never heard these studies before about the romantic side effects of the pill, but I think they are fascinating. So basically with the pill, you don't ovulate because the pill makes your body and any other hormonal contraception that has synthetic estrogen and progesterone make your body feel like it's pregnant. So you don't ovulate, right? You're still having your periods, but basically what it is, it's a it's instead of your egg being released, it's your uterine wall that's shedding. And it's a lot lighter because when you're on the pill, your endometrium is not as thick. It's a lot less. Um, so what's interesting is that when you ovulate, a lot of good things happen. So I, it's funny, on Shape Magazine, it's not like they're trying to get you to not take the pill, but they actually did a, a uh, article called Weird Ways Your Body Hints at Fertility. And they had all these studies about what happens when you ovulate and when you're fertile. When, you're, when you ovulate, your cheeks are pinker. Your voice is more attractive. Actually, both men and women in these studies said a woman's voice was more attractive when she was fertile, when she was ovulating. And in fact, I love this, it says, um, when men heard fertile women speaking, electrical activity in their skin increased by 20%. They were like, whew, there's something going on this woman. Dr. Miriam Law Smith, the lead researcher of this one study, said that fertile women display fuller lips, plumper cheeks, brighter eyes, and smoother skin, all courtesy of the extra estrogen that comes with ovulation. I love this. Indeed, the men in the study found women who were ovulating to be more attractive overall, even if they couldn't specify a particular feature that stood out to them. And I saw one study that was reported by the BBC, I think it was back in 1998, and they said that average women were actually seen, if they were ovulating, were seen as more beautiful than supermodels. So, woohoo! But I think there's even more crazy things that happen when you're on the pill. So. Um, there was a study done where when women were off the pill, they were attracted to men whose biochemistry is dissimilar. Um, but when they are on the pill, they are attracted to men whose MHC, their major histocompatibility complex, is more similar to their own. And people, they're like, well, we don't know why, but we think when you're on the pill, because it's like you're pregnant, you want to surround yourself with people like your family. So when you're on the pill, you're attracted to men who are close to your family members. And this is bad because we are primed to be attracted to men to whom we are genetically dissimilar, um, which lowers the chance of miscarriage and increases our likelihood of having a healthy baby. And Flow Living did an article about this and they said it also tends to make for more satisfying sex and happier relationships when you are when you are with someone who's genetically dissimilar to you, their biochemistry is different. They're not like your family members, essentially. And the journal Psychological Science, they found that women paired with MHC similar men are less sexually satisfied and more likely to cheat on their partners than women paired with MHC dissimilar men. So when you were on the pill, you're not releasing these pheromones um, that are attracting men who are genetically dissimilar to you. You're not, you're not ovulating at all when you're on the pill. So you might end up with somebody who is like your family. So I've even seen doctors recommend like, get off the pill for six months so at least you can see if you're compatible with this person, if you're genetically dissimilar. I think one of the craziest studies is that back in 1972, researchers, um, they looked at monkeys and they, they had a group of female monkeys, they injected them with Depo-Provera, which is also combined estrogen progesterone, and the male monkey, the main alpha monkey, Austin, he totally avoided those female monkeys and he went to the other females. Now, when that wore off, they, they injected this other group of female monkeys with Depo-Provera and he completely avoided them and went back to the other monkeys. Now, what happened when they injected all of them with Depo-Provera at the same time? This monkey went 
berserk. He 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 literally would he would go around. He was like cr going crazy, and he didn't mate with any of them. And he started having some behaviors that I am not going to mention here. But let's get off the pill because it's affecting who we are getting into relationships with. I think that would be reason enough for me. Whew. Number four reason you should ditch the pill are the environmental effects. I mean, how about some synthetic estrogen with your drinking water? <laughs> no, you guys, it's happening all over the country, all over the world, that when these rivers or these bodies of water are downstream from the city sewers or their waste you know, treatment centers, they're finding estrogen in the water. In fact, the University of Colorado um, they were, you know, studying trout downstream from the city sewer plant and they found that 100 out of the 123 trout, there were 101 female, 12 male and 10 dubbed intersex because they possess both male and female features. The, the biologist who did this, University of Colorado, um, John Woodling, told the Denver Post, he said, it's the first thing that I've seen as a scientist that really scared me. The U.S. Geological Survey found that 80 to 100 percent of the smallmouth bass fish in the Potomac River were found to have eggs in their testes as they were dubbed intersex fish because these male fish were growing female reproductive parts. So if you care for the environment, the thing is we are in, we are taking these hormones and we are peeing them out and these, this estrogen is getting in the water and it's very, very difficult to remove. I mean, I've read studies about New Jersey's drinking water, having a lot of endocrine disruptors and part of it's like the pill, the estrogen progesterone. It's it's pretty disturbing. So if you care about the environment, ditch the pill, you guys. The last reason you should ditch the pill, and I think this is one of the most important, if not the most important reason, is that the pill acts as an abortifacient part of the time. What does this mean? Now, this is supposed to be controversial, but I don't know how it's controversial because, you know, we know in, in our biology books, we know it's scientific that life begins at conception, right? When an egg and a sperm meet, they're fer it's fertilized new life begins new human life begins well interesting enough in the 1970s a bunch of OBGYN said that pregnancy begins when that fertilized egg is implanted now why is this controversial to say that hormonal contraceptives act as abortifacients well most of the time they act as contraceptives they prevent you from ovulating so you don't conceive but their second and third mechanism is um, they also make the cervical mucus thick so that sperm doesn't get through. But if that fails, basically the endometrial wall becomes very thin when you are on these hormonal contraceptives. And if a, an egg is fertilized, it will be aborted. So it's not just contraceptives, they're contra fertilization. If you are pro-life, if you are against, if you are anti-abortion, um, this is a problem. You need to get off the pill because you know, the pill is touted as 99.7% effective, but it said when people, but actual user um, effectiveness is only 91%. So nine out of a hundred women will get pregnant. But the thing is there are a whole lot of women, your studies show that five to 13% of each cycle, you're, it's possible that you can have a breakthrough ovulation, that egg will be fertilized, but your endometrium won't won't receive that egg and it won't implant and you won't become pregnant and you'll actually abort that child. Everyone tries to downplay this fact that they are abortifacients, but the Department of Health and Human Services even said in their pamphlet about combined pills said, it is possible for women using combined pills, synthetic estrogen and progestin to ovulate. Then other mechanisms work to prevent pregnancy. Both kinds of pills make the cervical mucus thick and inhospitable to sperm, discouraging any entry to the uterus. In addition, they make it difficult for a fertilized egg to implant by causing changes in fallopian tube contractions and in the uterine lining. Normally your endometrium is normally lush when you're fertile, it's lush and it's ready to receive that fertilized egg. But when you're on the pill, it basically thins it out so it's inhospitable. All these things are on my website and I'm going to um, also post all the studies I found because basically for each one of these points, I'm only saying two or three things, but I have found so many medical journals and articles. I'm gonna list them on my website, on our website, JackieAndBobby.com, so you can see all these studies and you can do the research yourself and go even deeper into this. I just believe that we should be informed and I believe there are better options, you guys. Um, go to fertilitycare.org, naturalwomanhood.org, lovenaturallynfp.com and you can see alternatives that actually, for any reason you are on the pill, if you're using it to avoid pregnancy, there are better, more natural options. My husband and I use a model called the Creighton. It's 99.8% effective at avoiding pregnancy if that's what you're doing, but it also helps you to get pregnant if that's what you want to do. It helps to 
you know, see underlying symptoms if you have endometriosis, PCOS, all these things. You guys, we deserve better. We deserve better. You deserve better. I think we deserve to be informed. And I say ditch the pill, ditch hormonal contraceptives because there are better options out there that are healthier for you, safer for you. And I hope you join us next week. Uh, this is only part one of the four-part series. So join us next week in the next couple weeks to learn even more about birth control, contraception, natural period planning. Hope to see you then. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless.